Hi, yeah. folks. I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. <laughs> Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of we course, We interrupted Bob. me, Brad. I'm sorry. But today, Brad, we, we, you want to talk about the big lie about leg length discrepancy or differences, um, you know, when there's actually a, a difference between one leg and the other, one leg is longer. Um, and, and this is kind of an area that's ripe with scandal, maybe, <laughs> or problems? Well, it's misunderstood. I think some people, they, you know, they go uh, to the doctor, the chiropractor, the therapist, whatever, uh, you know, the person, you know, they look at them and a couple of minutes, oh my goodness, you got a leg length difference. We better get on this right away. Perhaps we can get you some custom uh, inserts in your shoes or maybe even build up the soles on one shoe to get you straightened out. Otherwise, you're going to have back problems your whole life and it's going to, you're going to turn your life upside down. We got to get you straightened out. And, and a lot of times that may not be the case and we're, and we're trying to save you some money here because right. we're, we're going to show you alternatives right. what you can try. There are cases where you need to get a custom shoe uh, sole put on there right? Uh, but we just hold on and we're going to show yeah. you the exact how link, how the leg length should be measured right. what it all entails and how many different uh, ways there ways are, there are for errors Yeah, lots of ways for errors and you're going to find out in the next 10 minutes uh, what we're talking about First of all, leg length difference. The average person, when they took a random sample of thousands of people, the random difference or the, the average difference was 1.1 centimeter on the average person. Yeah, and that's yeah. average. Yeah. So you find all the people that are normal. So that, I mean, it's, it's really not that unusual to have a difference between the legs. And right, the legs. a lot of times you're born with it, your body adapts to it over time. Uh, or over time, you may uh, one knee may have wore out more than the other, exactly. and, and therefore you, that, that leg is going to be shorter. Right. Um, um, so, having a leg length difference may not be a big deal. It depends on how much it is and what's what's it affecting in, in the chain in your knee, your hip, your back, etc. Um, Before we move any further, Brad, I just noticed a couple of people joined us. Sure. Uh, well, I see 327, Bob. Wow. <laughs> They're weird. It's a big day today. It they, was they, a big topic. They, they want to know about the leg length <laughs> discrepancy, but anyway. Brad, in case you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. And please like us on Facebook. Right. We need to be liked. Right. We're, we're so. looking for that companionship. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, leg length difference. There is one instance where I do get after it pretty quickly, more aggressively, and that's like example of someone had a trauma, a really severe break, a new knee, a new hip, that things didn't go well, and abruptly one day they had this leg length uh, that was level level and then the next day literally after surgery it changed a half an inch to an inch you know i've seen yeah. that before that that i'm going to treat a little bit differently yeah because that's a great discrepancy i mean that's a, and, a large difference in a very yeah. short time right one day <laughs> and generally when your body has to adapt to that it does not like it and does cause problems right exactly oh. uh as far as measuring you're going to see a lot of people, a lot of doctors, uh, therapists, chiropractors, they're going to have you lay down first either on your stomach or on your back. And I'm going to sh we're going to go through a complete assessment and the errors and the complications that come in uh, that are involved with measuring leg length difference. So we'll All go with right. that right now, Bob. Sounds good. Okay, so here we are assessing leg length discrepancy or difference in the supine position. In other words, a patient laying on their back. I do have some tape here. I'll just uh, explain what that th what it says there for. It's Lonnie did not, uh, is not there for her uh, makeup and, and decoration type of a thing. So we, that's that'll come later. It looks very fashionable. It does, it does. It's nice pink. Okay, so first thing, you get the person laying down on a nice flat plinth like this. And if someone does this and they look at the bottom of your heels and assess that for leg length difference, chances are they do not know what they're doing and it's not, that's not the way it's done. Yeah, exactly. You, you, right away you're gonna know a novice if, if they're exactly, doing Exactly, right. Um, you, if you look at this, it looks like her left one is, is a little bit longer, but you know, it could be something in the shoe. As a matter of fact, I just put the shoe in and it got even. Yeah. <laughs> the one good reason we don't do that. Okay, just relax, Lonnie. Um, so that's not, an acceptable way to do it. The next one to do it is uh, compare the medial malleolus, which is the ankle bone here and here. Both on the inside. Yep, on the, the inside. Ankle. And you're going to take your thumb and go underneath and go up till you feel it. And that's why I have the pink tape there, just so you get a good visual of, of where that is. I'm a little bit off here. We'll just move that a little bit. I don't want to 
get Lonnie all excited there if that hurts her ankle. So there we are, and then typically they lift up. No, just relax, Lonnie. Don't let, let me do all the work. I should let me do all the work. Pull out a little bit, and we go down, and we assess, and here it looks pretty even. Well, there you go. No leg length difference. But there's a few things that you really have to take into account. Lonnie, can you shift your hips? Lonnie's not going to do anything but shift her pelvis, and now all of a sudden we've got almost a two centimeter leg length difference. Yeah, Lonnie still looks fairly normal, you know, when I look, when I look at her. Well, but she she's, looks pretty normal she, anyway. Yeah, she hiked, <laughs> Sorry, her, she hiked her hip on one side, right. and now it looks like the right leg is a lot longer. Exactly. Correct? And there could be many reasons for that. Yeah. It, it could be because she's got some tight muscles. She's got a back problem. Some she could have spasm. a scoliosis. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be she could have been born that way. You really don't yeah. know. The other thing is now, well, can you just relax? We'll even up your pelvis a little bit. If I do this, she's even. But if I do this and I go over a few inches, now all of a sudden she's got a two centimeter leg length difference just yeah. because I went from here to here. Yeah, if she's not lined up. You know, if the legs aren't lined up with the trunk, right. that alone can make it look like the leg is longer. Exactly. So this takes a lot of skill and a lot of experience on the, uh, on the part of the practitioner, the therapist, the chiropractor, whoever may be assessing leg length difference. This is not an easy task to do accurately. Now, you can also measure it. So are we saying, Brad, that really that way is not a, a way to do it, correct? <laughs> Right. Well, it, you can do this and get information from it, but if that's the only way you are assessing the leg length difference and you're going to make a conclusion be, from that. You could be fooled easy. Right. You take this information and add it up with some of the other things we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, one of the common things, and, and when I was in physical therapy school oh, a few years back, from the umbilicus, the belly button down to the medial malleolus, the distal end of it, or the far end, and then you would measure both. So again, that's the, the ankle bone on the inside. Exactly. So from the, the belly button to the ankle bone on the inside. Right, exactly. Yeah. To the bottom side of the ankle bone. And the belly button, you know, you want to get the same point because we're talking with sure. a centimeter or two here. So there's a lot of room for error in this as well. Sure. So that's not a really acceptable. And they came up with a better option is to go to the ASIS, which is that part right on the pelvis bone where it's a little pointy right there. And so you're going from a bony point to a bony point, And this is considered to be more accurate. However, you can see there could be, you know, and if she shifts her hip this way, it doesn't matter near so much as what we talked about before with the visual and the pink tape. But there's still, especially if the person, you know, Lonnie's pretty thin. If you have someone that's pretty heavy. You're going to have trouble finding that marker. Right, and you could be a, a centimeter too off just on that landmark yeah. as well as you, you need some palpatory skills to, to, to do this. I mean, this is not something you're going to be able to do at home. Exactly. Um, so once again, this takes a lot of uh, skill and not, you know, practice, knowledge, and experience to, to get all this so you get a good feel for, for it. And, and then you still don't know if you have the right leg length difference because remember, like we mentioned earlier, the average leg length difference on the average person is 1.1 centimeter, and most of them have no symptoms. So if it's off a little bit, the body's adapted to it. You know, they were born that way typically. Okay, Bob, so we just looked at how to assess leg length difference in a supine position, now we're gonna look at weight bearing because really when it comes down to it, you need to assess it in weight bearing. And studies have shown, you know, I've looked, did some research on this and, and they all say you need to stand up because that's that's where it's happening. One of the more accurate ways. It, it does, I you mean, know, things. More accurate? Right, yeah. well, functionally, you, it doesn't matter right. if your legs are longer than other when you're laying down, it does though when you're putting weight through and walking. Yeah, that's, and everything settles down, right. you know, I mean. That's so. gonna cause the problems in the knee, the hip or the back, sure. is the weight bearing, not laying down if your leg is one inch longer, it doesn't matter if you're sleeping like that, but it does when you're walking or running. Right. Well, why don't you stand up, Bob? So standing, weight bearing, is the way to test it. So you can check it laying down, get your assessment there. Oh, this one looks a little bit longer, but see if it's consistent with weight bearing. Brad, I think it might be helpful just to show real quickly what we're it's, doing here is, is we're, we're gonna be measuring on the top of the pelvis here. Right, I like the way you think, Bob. <laughs> you, that is, because here, this, I'm gonna be putting my fingers right here on the top of his pelvis right there on the iliac crest, we call those, okay? So that's gonna give us an idea of that leg length. And, Lonnie's got a good angle right there, and you, you're going to find out 
you know, Bob's a thin guy. I can go up there. I can feel those bones right there, and I'm going to push in, and right there. Can, how does that look, Line? Does it look like it's even? Okay, yeah, don't be shy back there. Okay, now bend one knee slightly, Bob. Okay, you see a leg length difference? But he doesn't have a leg length difference. He just bent one knee. Uh, in some people, it is hard to see if their knee is bent, if they're very obese or if they have some uh, abnormalities in their legs or their hips. It's hard to tell sometimes. And they may not be able to straighten that exactly, knee Exactly, right. So, so uh, there's a lot of things. Now, if Bob is standing there and he looks like a very healthy person and he's locked up straight, normal posture, and I look at, look at him and I say, boy, it looks pretty good. I'm going to give him an artificially long leg by putting this half inch. Lift your whole leg up, Bob. Let's just put your whole foot on there. Okay. And so now I know I changed it. I lifted this leg up artificially by an inch, and we should be able to see that. And I think it's pretty clear, and you can see that yourself. But now, this is pretty ideal. Bob's healthy. There's no problems with him. He's thin. But if you take someone that's yeah. rather obese, uh, maybe they have knee problems, arthritic, which oftentimes people do, you can see how it this can... It's a lot harder to, to find those, those points. Exactly. So the best way, technically, to get a leg length difference, and this is done through studies, is to get a full body scan. Uh, it's, it's not a typical x-ray, we're not going to get into that, but you're standing, they scan your body, and then you can measure the bony structures very accurately. It's costly, time consuming. And, and it, we're not going to recommend that, really. When it boils down to it, uh, it's not going to change the, the final treatment anyways, because what's going to happen is, if you're having a leg length problem, you go through all the assessments and you think, yeah, I really think the right one's three centimeters longer, it just looks like that, and you're, you're giving it your best guess. What I do is I take that leg length difference and I divide it by two, so that would be 1.5 centimeters, and then I'm gonna put a temporary or a trial lift under the heel of the shorter leg. And I do the same thing. So yeah, let's, just to make it easy, let's say Brad, it was one inch difference. Sure, right. We'd cut it in half, a half inch yep. is how much we'd correct. Right, exactly. So. And then you let the person go for a day or two, and you tell them if it feels better, fine. If it's starting to create pain, you know, a day into it, well, just stop. Don't force yourself to Yeah, if it starts it. taking away their pain, or, you know, it, it made a difference. A lot of times I just do, Brad, is I'll cut a piece of carpet even. Sure. Um, or some little piece of foam, and I'll put it in their shoe. And like I said, because it's only for a couple of days, it doesn't have to be anything that's really you elaborate. Just cut right into the floor and take a piece of carpet. I do. Out. You should see our carpet. It has all little <laughs> heel marks cut out of it. So, yeah, anyways, yeah, you can use, you know, I've used cardboard in the past. Oh, cardboard, yeah. And then, you know, then if you find out that it really did help, then you can go out and sometimes you can just buy something from the store. You don't need anything custom made generally, right. unless it's a lot. Right. Then you may need to have the shoe built up. Right, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that gets into money. So, you know, we're talking to people here that are doing these at home. Right. Um, I, you know, in the clinic, I don't take a piece of cardboard out and do it, but I, I have some material that's made for it. Right. But there's no, nothing saying you can't do this at home if you do not have the funds to, to do it or... Yeah, and give it a try and see if it helps. Right. Really, what's the, what's if lost? If it feels much better, you clearly feel better, your backache went away, your knee pain is better, whatever it is, it's very, very Yeah, clear. don't spend a lot of money on this unless you know clearly that it's going to help. Right. That's, that's our bottom right. line here. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to get the doctors and the podiatrists all excited and the chiropractors. Yeah, <laughs> everybody doesn't like us already, so... <laughs> It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So take care. Thanks.